everybody, my name is Amberlynn and today I'm going to be making this character graphic in Photoshop CS5. I'm sure that this tutorial will be convertible for CS3 and 4 as well, but I don't own those and I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, before we begin, I'd just like to say that I'm, this is my first time doing a Photoshop tutorial for the public and I'm bound to screw up a few times and I'm bound to swear, so just a warning for that. And I'm not going to edit this because I haven't the slightest idea how. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope it helps you out as a new admin. And if you aren't a role player or you do not need these for character needs, this is a very good way to learn how to make something like this. So yeah, let's begin. First, you're going to want to make a new document, which is File New, and the document's 500 pixels by two, four, blah, 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 240 pixels. After that, you say OK. <sighs> Before you go and find your texture image, just convert this to a black background by pressing Control i and that will invert the picture. Anyway, I went out and I found this pretty light texture by somebody on DeviantArt. I'm going to link the picture down below. So yeah, just copy the image and paste it into Photoshop. Resize the image to look pretty. <laughs> There's really no other way to say that. After that, go to your uh, go to over to the layers area over here, and bring the fill down until it looks dark, but you can still see the prettiness of the picture. <laughs> After that's done, press Control A to select the entire image, and then Control Shift C, and that will copy everything, all the layers, and merge it into one layer. After that, paste. After that's done, just make those invisible. The When I say those, I mean the layers underneath, so the layer 1 and background. And we do this just to be able to see what's behind there, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. Roll over your uh, rectangle thingamajiggy over here, the select tool, rectangular marquee tool. Click and hold until you see this little pop-up menu, and then go to the word thing there. <laughs> and we've frozen. Warning, no pixels were selected. I know. I didn't select any. After that, after you have your circle thingy selected, um, select it, uh, press the shift key and click and drag it somewhere on your screen. So like I'm doing right now. I'm not very good at wording it, but you can see what I'm doing while I'm stammering here. After that, drag your picture, your circle somewhere that's roughly very much in the middle of the screen. Cool! You're almost done. There we go. <laughs> After you've done that, press the masked tool. So that is the rectangle with the circle-y thing in the middle. See, now that is what's going to happen, but you don't want that, so make sure that you're, click you're clicking the, you're on the mask and then do what you did for the background, control I, and that will invert it. So, awesome! Now you have your whole background awesomeness thing going on. I'm going to stop saying that because it sounds so weird. After that, um, make sure that you're still on your mask tool and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Um, have it at around 3 pixels, so your radius needs to be around 3 pixels. So it'll give it a blur, but it won't be ridiculous. Cool. Now we're ready for the text thing. So go back up to the circular thing. <laughs> and then go to rectangle. Mine is messing up right now, but I'm clicking the rectangle tool. No, I'm not. I'm not clicking the rectangle tool. Is it really going to do this right now? It looks like it. Cool. Alright, so what you'd usually do is you'd go to the rectangle tool, but because it's being a tool for me right now, sorry, um, I am going to go here. I'm not saying do this. This is actually ridiculous, and I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. I am making a path, and... It's being a tool. Fuck. See? I told you. I promised swearing. 
There we go. So I'm selecting that. I don't want to, but it's making me. After that, fill your selection that you should have made with the Select D tool. You know, this one that's working now. All right, now that it's working again, just make the select D tool, make a new layer after making a random rectangle and fill it with black. I'm sorry about that. That just probably caused some random confusion that was completely unnecessary. Resize it till it's about this wide and drag it so that there's still a little bit of circle showing. And after that, create a text layer on top of the black box and with any font, I'm using Walkway Bold, and that can be found on defont.com to make a random name. Make sure that the font is actually white after you're done typing. And 30 pixels is a really good uh, size for this font, but the font, size, the font size may vary depending on what it is. After that, resize your box again to match the font. The thinner, the better, but you do want it to make an impression. Then drag it back down so only a little bit of the box is showing. You're almost done. Yay. Okay. Now go on to the layer one again. Even though you can't see it, just cl click on it because that's where you want to rest. And then go and find a GIF of whatever face claim that you want. I'm using Selena Gomez because she's very, very popular. And though I don't use her, some people might. And yeah. Okay. When you have your GIF copied, so the link, go to File import video frames to layers. Now sometimes a quick uh, notification will come up saying that you need QuickTime. Just go on the QuickTime site and install that and then you should be fine. Okay, so paste the URL of the GIF into the load thing and press load and wait and wait. It shouldn't take too long but if it does just wait it out and press OK. After you have the GIF done, pull the, I'll do that again, click on the little box thing with the name and pull it so that it's off and you can see your Photoshop document and you can see the GIFs. After that, click and drag the GIFs onto the image and then get out of that GIF thing because you don't need it anymore. Make sure that you're on the first layer, which you should be, I mean, animation thing because you should be. <coughs> and if you don't know where the animation thing came from, I'll show you in a second, don't worry. Anyways, click and drag your GIF so that it fits perfectly and looks pretty on your character graphic. Make sure that there's no white spaces. That was a mistake on my part. Here we go. Now, if you want to make your GIF black and white, which sometimes I suggest doing and sometimes I don't, but in this case I do because it looks pretty, and if you find another uh, if you have trouble finding GIFs of a chair, most of the time there's some in black and white. Or if the coloring doesn't match, you can just make it black and white. And there's a whole bunch of reasons that black and white is the best thing for lazy people. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, if you want to make it black and white, just create a new layer and use the fill tool, which is the bucket that's spilling over with paint, and paint the layer white that you made, the new layer that you made, and then. Go up here where it says normal, scroll down, and click color, and that'll make it black and white. Sometimes black and white GIFs don't look that great, so you can go to layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, and you can play with it a little. I think that looks alright. Sometimes I'll use layers and I'll teach you how to do that in, a, next to, in another tutorial, but right now that might take a little while. So, if this is your first time making a GIF, then the animation tool isn't actually open. So you go to Window, and then you press Animation. It's the third one down. It should be anyways if you don't have any add-ons. Set your time down here where it says 0 seconds to 0 0.15. After that, you're ready to create your GIF. Now, this GIF is actually quite short, so it's good. Now, after you've set your time, you press New Frame, and then you click Visible on the next layer. Then you repeat that until you're out of frames to work with. There we go.
It's almost done. Now you press File, Save for Web and Devices, Save. You should have a character folder, and you save it by their name. So yeah, that's it. If you have any other questions, or if you feel that this didn't actually explain it well enough, just let me know in the comments section, because I really do love feedback. This is my first time ever doing a YouTube video, really, um, for people who aren't in my group and all that. Anyway, so yeah, let me know. Okay, bye!